welcome to this fifth Java video tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be discussing the concepts of object oriented programming now basically what object oriented programming is is that you create objects inside your programs rather than a long list of commands and these objects are just like real world objects in the fact that they have about different kinds of behavior and attributes and you might might think well, well why should I do this object oriented programming it doesn't seem that good well the advantages of it are that you can reuse this code you create very very easily um, your code becomes easier to read for other people and yourself and also um, it prevents you from making mistakes because if you want to do a command 20 times instead of writing out it all again and again and again you just you can just call an object's method and it will do it for you so they're the advantages I'll just show you what a simple class definition looks like okay so here we have a class uh, and a class and a class is an object template so when an object is created um, its template is used to create it so that means objects created from the same class are often very similar or even identical now here we can see we have a couple of variables now these variables are known as attributes because they are what the object has so this this um, class is called robot so my robot has an age a processing power and capacity okay and they're assigned just like normal variables would because that's what they are they're just variables okay and then down here we have all the objects behavior and these are called methods now these methods are pretty simple turn on just prints turning onto the screen turn off prints turning off process prints processing and display attributes prints out all the attributes okay now the one you may be a little confused about is this method here now you might notice that this method doesn't have what the others have a void in front of it and um, basically what void means is um, it doesn't return a value so if I wanted to this could be int turn on but then it would have to return a value return 23 for example or a variable or an int variable um, but uh, we don't want it to return a value so it's just void anyway now this method doesn't have a return type and that's because it's the constructor now the constructor takes the same name as the class and basically what it is is whenever an object is created from this class the class's constructor is run and what you want to do in the constructor is set up the object with its uh, initial values and um, things like that so as you can see here this object this constructor sets up the object with its age processing power and capacity attributes now to do this I've used a thing called parameters now parameters go inside the parenthesis that you see on all of these methods now you can use parenthesis on any methods I mean I could put at, um, parameters in here but I don't want to I just want them in here because I can enter data from an external source so basically you're just telling it that these are the variables I am going to call my per parameters and they will be defined when the object is made but you'll see how these work when we create an object in a second but for now you you may understand you may not 
don't worry just know that this will take a val an integer the age value and then we assign that to the actual age of the robot itself and we do that for all the attributes okay so let's save that and let's call that robot.java okay now you may have noticed this doesn't have a main method and that's because by itself we don't want to do anything this doesn't really do anything we, we it's just a class definition so what we want to do is create another program that uses this robot me this robot class okay let's open up notepad again then new notepad okay and let's call it class application okay and then public static void main if you're wondering um, why class is at the top of everything is because Java is a totally object oriented programming language which means everything is inside classes everything is an object so um, in this this is a class called application but it on it's only going to have one method which is the main method which is where the program starts the, com the, uh, the when it is run that's where it goes first okay so inside here we're going to create a new robot object and to do that we the data type we want is the robot data type because that's what it is robot you see okay so robot bender for any of you who watch Futurama <laughs> and then the keyword we need to use now is new and then robots okay then uh, we need to enter the parameters so which we said it was going to take here so it's age power processing power and capacity so let's give it an age of 4 a processing power of 67.7 and a capacity of 245.976 Okay, just spread those out so you can see them a little better. Okay, so let's analyze what this does. Basically, it tells the this program here that Bender is going to be an object, a, a robot object in fact, and it assigns the robot, it's not a data type as such, but it tells the program that Bender will be a robot object. And then this hit bit here calls the constructor of the robot class, as you can see. We've got all our parameters in there. So we and you do that with the new class, so that's creating a new instance of the robot class. Okay. So now we can use Bender the name Bender as a reference to anything what to do with this object so Bender dot what was it turn on okay that will call the turn on method okay then we can process Bender dot display attributes and then bender dot turn off. Okay, so this program will compile and all it does is create a new object called Bender, which is a robot object, calls its constructor, assigns it initial values, then it then it uses its methods. So bender dot turn on. Now the dot is the accessor operator, and that accesses the object's methods and um, attributes. So I could um, do this uh, int bender age equals bender dot age. Now what that will do is create a new integer variable 
called Bender Age and it will assign it to Bender's Age because Bender, which is our reference to the object and then dot the accessor so we can access everything and then it's the age attribute which is the variable so that will do that but let's get rid of that because we don't want that to do that and the rest of these methods are pretty self-explanatory they, they're just declared here so as you can see um, if the process for example if the process method was long and complicated it did lots of calculations to get to an answer then instead of writing out all those long and complicated calculations each time we can just say bender.process and then that it, it's done so that just shows an advantage of object oriented programming instead of writing out all that code all over again we, we can just type bender.process and it will do it all and then do whatever it does okay so let's compile this program just to show you it works hopefully it works okay let's just travel to the desktop and Java C let's actually let, let's compile robot first okay oops okay we've just missed out a semicolon somewhere oh no we've missed out a curly brace we've missed out lots of curly braces I'm sure you noticed that when I was typing it unfortunately I didn't okay so that will compile now there we go so the robot class is compiled if we try to run the robot class on its own however we will get a horrible error which you see there now that's because it doesn't contain the main method so that means it can't run because it's got nowhere to start but that's not a ma that's no problem because we don't actually want to run the robot object the robot class on its own we want to run the application class which uses the robot object so let's compile application and of course we have errors and that is because I think I mistyped something what have I done I don't know what it is you'll find this when you're programming you get however hard you try you'll always get errors when you um, when you do programming, I mean, no one's perfect. Even the most experienced programmers get errors. So anyway, let's look at this one. What is it? Cannot find symbol. I think I've typed this wrong. Display attributes. Display. Ah. <laughs> I've misspelled attributes in the robot class. So if I just save that, recompile the robot class and then compile the application again. There we go, it works fine now. And then let's just run the application. And there we go. So it turns on processing processing H4 processing power 67.7 capacity 245.976 and then turning off. Okay. So let's just imagine that this we never we we knew the robot the robot um class we knew it existed but we never we di we don't need to know what it does we we do need to know what it does we don't need to know how it does it so we don't need to know this code this is just a hypothetical situation if you're wondering what I'm babbling on about that we don't have to know how the robot class turns on we don't know how it displays attributes all we need to know is that when we call the display attributes methods it displays the attributes when we call the process method it processes um, now that's another advantage, advantage of object oriented programming because someone can just read up what an object does and then use its methods without knowing how it does it. For example, 
we can use the uh, uh, math class math dot random. So there, I've just called the random method of the math class, and I don't need to know how it works out a random number. All I need to know is that it will create a random number. So that's another advantage. Okay, that's about really for, really for object oriented programming. I'm not sure how well I've explained it, but I hope you've understood some of it. Um, if you've got any questions, just post them on YouTube.